Hi and welcome to the video on equivalent equations. By the end of this video you should be able to manipulate equivalent equations and so I'm going to show you what that means. Here I have an equivalent equation 4 plus 3 equals 7. Now in this video I'm going to be talking about the left hand side and the right hand side LHS and RHS. The left hand side is anything to the left of the equal sign and the right hand side is anything to the right of the equal sign. Left hand side, right hand side. Sometimes I'll even draw a little dotted line underneath my equal sign just so you can see the left hand side and the right hand side. Now that that's out of the way, 4 plus 3 equals 7 is an equivalent equation. What I want to do is what happens when I add 2 to that 3. So instead of doing 4 plus 3, I want to do 4 plus 5 and see what happens to my answer. Well 4 plus 5 equals 9. That's not 7, so I've changed the 7 as well. And what I've done to the 7 is added 2 to it. So what you'll know, it, notice is that I've added 2 to the left hand side and 2 to the right hand side to create an equivalent equation, or at least to continue on my equivalent equation. Let's see what happens when I subtract 1 from that 5. So instead of 4 plus 5, I want to do 4 plus 4 and see what that equals. Well 4 plus 4 equals 8. That's not 9. But if I subtract 1 from the 9 as well, I get 8, and that is an equivalent equation. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to both sides in order to keep them equivalent or equal. This is very important for solving equations. Let me show you. Let's say I told you that x plus 7 equals 10. What happens if I was to subtract 7 from the left hand side? Well, if I start with 7 and I take away 7, I'm left with 0. So on the left hand side, all I'm left with is x. And if I do the same thing to the right hand side, 10 take away 7, I'll get 3. And that just happens to be the solution of the, to the equation. And we've just solved it like a boss. But we're going to talk about solving equations in the next video. Let's look at more manipulation of these equations. Let's say we start with an equivalent equation, x equals 5. So I'm telling you that the letter x represents the number 5. What happens if I multiply 2 to both sides of that equation? Well, my left hand side will be 2x, because it's 2 lots of x, and the right hand side will be 2 lots of 5, which is 10. This is now an equivalent equation. What happens if I add 3 to both sides? Well, for 2x plus 3, I can't actually add 2x and 3 together because they're not like terms. So all I can really do is write out 2x plus 3. For the right hand side, I can do 10 plus 3, that's 13. So I'll write that in. So 2x plus 3 equals 13. What happens if I subtract 10 from both sides? Well, I can't subtract 10 from 2x because they're not like terms. But I can do 3 take away 10. I know that 3 take away 10 is minus 7. So my left hand side now will be 2x minus 7. And that'll equal whatever 13 take away 10 is. 13 take away 10 is 3. So now I still have an equivalent equation, 2x take away 7 equals 3. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 7 to both sides. Remember what happens when you have a minus 7 and a plus 7? Well, they'll cancel each other out because they equal 0. So on the left hand side I'll have just 2x, but on the right hand side I'll have whatever 3 plus 7 is. And 3 plus 7 is 10. Now I have an equivalent equation still, 2x equals 10, or 2 times x equals 10. What I'm going to do now is divide both sides by 2 and see what happens. Well, 2x means 2 times x, so if I divide by 2, they cancel each other out. I'm just left with x. The 2s will go away. If I look at the right-hand side, 10 divided by 2, I'm left with 5. And here's something I want you to notice. See how we started with x equals 5 and finished with x equals 5? That's because we continue to do equivalent equations all the way through. Also notice something else. My equal signs are directly underneath each other. My left hand side is on the left and my right hand side is on the right of all those equal signs of that red dotted line. I want you to keep that in mind when you try your solving your equations in future. Let's look at the right hand side of the screen. x equals 3. Here's what I'd like you to do to that. I'd like you to follow these instructions and complete these to both sides of your equal sign. And I want to see if you can't finish off with x equals 3 at the end. Pause the video and see what you can come up with.
Okay, so we're going to start off by multiplying by 3 on both sides of my equation. 3 times x is just 3x, and 3 times 3 is 9. So I have an equivalent equation, 3x equals 9. Now I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Now you can't add 3x and 5 together because they're unlike terms. So my left hand side will just be 3x plus 5. On the right hand side I can add 9 and 5 together so I get 14. So my equivalent equation is 3x plus 5 equals 14. Next up I asked you to subtract 9 from both sides. Again you can't do 3x take away 9 but we can do 5 take away 9 because they're like terms. 5 take away 9 is minus 4. So on the left hand side I get 3x minus 4 and on the right hand side I get 5. Then I asked you to add 4 to both sides. So I started at minus 4 and I added 4. That gets me to 0. And when, the zero, when I get 0 that goes away and I'm left with 3x on the left hand side and I get 9 on the right hand side. Next up I asked you to divide by 3. Well if I have 3 times something and I divide by 3 I'm just left with that starting number which is the x. So in this case I'll get x on the left hand side and 9 divided by 3 is 3 on the right hand side. Notice how I started with x equals 3 and finished with x equals 3. Also notice that if I draw a dotted line underneath my, all my equal signs, they all line up. This is what manipulating equivalent equations is all about. In these examples, I'm actually asking you to work out what the operation is that I need to do to both sides of my equation in order to get my equivalent equation. So for example, in example 1, I have 2, x plus, sorry, 2 plus x equals 7, and I've got to somehow get to 6 plus x equals 11. What am I doing to both sides of my equal sign? Well, on the left hand side, I'm going to be adding 4. So on the right hand side, I'm also adding 4. I'd like you to pause the video now and try and work out what 2, 3 and 4 are and what operations you're doing to both sides of the equal sign in order to get the equivalent equation. All right, I hope you pause the video and try 2, 3 and 4 yourself. Here's a number 2. To go from 7x to 14x, I must be doubling or multiplying by 2. And it just so happens that if I times 10 by 2 as well, I also get 20. So it looks like I'm going to be multiplying both sides by 2. For question 3, 30 equals 20b. It looks like 30 divided by 10 will give me 3, and 20 divided by 10 will also give me 2. So I get divided by 2, sorry, divided by 10 on both sides of my equal sign. For question number 4, there's two parts. 7q minus 4 equals 10. And I need to get the 7q equals 14. Well, it looks like I'm going to be adding 4 to both sides of my equation. That way, the minus 4 and the plus 4 will cancel each other out, and the 10 plus 4 will give me the 14 that I need. Now I need to go from 7q to, f to just q, so maybe I'm taking away 6q. But when I look at the right-hand side, 14 going to 2, it looks like I'm going to have to be dividing by 7 on both sides. So in order to go from 7q equals 14 to q equals 2, I need to divide both sides by 7. Notice how all of my equal signs are directly underneath each other. Again, this is a really important point that I want you to hammer home when you're doing your own work. So what should you write? A heading of equivalent equations is a good start, and then get down these two examples that we did during the video. You can also get down these four examples that we worked out when we, did, when we worked out the equivalent um, operation that we were doing to all our equations. And that's it. Hopefully by now you can manipulate equivalent equations, and if you can't, you can always ask questions in class tomorrow. Good luck.